Before we get started with the build, let's run through the parts you're going to need to do this project. First of all, you're going to need the Armitan F14B frame from ArmitanQuads.com. This is going to come with the 3x3 LED bar for the rear of the quad and all the hardware you're going to need to put this build together. For the PDB, I'm going to be using the Foxier PDB which comes with a 5 volt step down which is really handy for powering your flight controller. The flight controller, I started with the Multi-Rider Mania Dragonfly 32, but I ended up switching to a Seriously Dodo, uh, which came in the mail uh, in the middle of this build. For the ESCs, I'm going to be using the Multi-Rider Mania Zeus 20 amps, and for motors, I'm running RCX 1306 3200 kVs. For these motors, you're going to want to run Gemfan 4045 props. Uh, I would not recommend running bullnose props as the motors will get really hot. For FPV, we're going to be running the Hawkeye 200 milliwatt VTX and the Sony 600 TBL FPV camera. For the receiver, we're going to run the D4R2 from FreeSky. And just for some added bling, we're going to be using the ReadyMade RC Fire LED XL Blue. Alright, let's move on to the power distribution. This is going to include wiring your ESCs, wiring your motors, and setting up your power distribution board. So the first step is to remove the heat shrink that comes on your ESCs. And once we have that removed from the four ESCs, we're just gonna unsolder the three motor wires coming off of all the ESCs because we're gonna directly solder the wires coming out of the motors to the ESCs. So once that's done, go ahead and measure out your motor wires to the ESC pads and you know just leave a couple millimeters of slack in case you need to reverse any of the wires to switch motor direction or what you can do is switch motor direction in BL Heli using one wire on clean flight which I will go over at the end of this video. So once you have it measured out go ahead and clip the wires and then what you're going to do is just pull off about a millimeter to two millimeters of covering from the wires. And to do this, you can just use your fingertips uh, and just rip off the tips. Once you have that done, go ahead and pre-tin the motor wires. Um, just enough solder so that the, all the wires are covered. And just make sure your soldering iron is not too hot. You want to see the solder, um, when it dries you want to see it shiny, not dull. Go ahead and solder these wires directly onto the three ESC pads. And again, just make sure that when the solder cools that it's shiny and not dull. Um, if it's not shiny, then just uh, lower the heat on your iron. And I would recommend cleaning off the solder and starting over fresh.
All right, now you're just gonna to wanna to repeat this process for the remaining three ESCs, and then we'll move on to the next step. This next step, grab the 6mm nylon Phillips head screws and the M3 nylon lock nuts. Thread the, the 6mm screws through the frame and then secure those screws with the M3 nylon lock nuts and then throw the power distribution board on top of that. Now I messed around with a few different configurations to mount the flight controller. And what I ended up doing was using some 20mm nylon standoffs, female to female. Uh, to mount the flight controller upside down and this is just to keep the wire wiring neat. So once you have your configuration decided on, go ahead and thread your XT60 through the bottom of the frame if you're going to be mounting your battery on the bottom or if you're going to mount your battery on the top I would recommend having the XT60 coming out of the side of the PDB. So go ahead and solder that on, red to the positive and black to the negative sides. Power the ESCs. We're going to take the red wire and connect that to the positive side of the PDB and the black wire and connect that to the negative side of the PDB. So at this point you're going to want to throw some heat shrink over your ESCs just to make sure the ESC doesn't touch any of the carbon fiber once your ESC is mounted onto the arm. You're going to want to measure out the red wire and the black wire so that you have just enough slack to solder the wires on to each side of the PDB. So once you have your wires measured out, just go ahead and cut off you know, a millimeter to two millimeters off the tip of the uh, wire covering and then pre-tin the wire and then just solder that on to the side of the PDB. Take the black wire, run that across the PDB so it's nice and flat and then solder that on to the other side. Again, just repeat this process for the next three ESCs and then we'll move on to the next step. Let's move on to the LEDs and the clean flight programming for the 3x3 adjustable LED uh, rear light that comes with the frame. So go ahead and, re and uh, remove the backing of the double sided tape that comes with the LEDs and uh, throw those on the arms. Um, for this build I'm doing four of the uh, Fire XLs in an X pattern. Um, I couldn't really figure out any other place to put the LEDs so this seems like the best area. Go ahead and pre-tin the positive and negative pads on the inside of the LEDs and then start measuring out your positive and negative wires which are going to go from the LEDs straight to the power distribution board. Um, these LEDs can take up to 4S batteries so they should handle a 4S just fine. They might get a little hot but they, they'll be okay. So once you have your wires soldered onto the LEDs, you're just going to thread them through any hole in the bottom of the frame and solder those on to the positive and negative sides of the power distribution board. Uh, you know, just like we did with the ESCs, try to use as, as little wire as possible to reduce weight and just keep the, the build as clean as possible. 
wired up these LEDs they're gonna be on as soon as you plug in the, uh, the battery so I actually ended up switching to the dodo flight controller mid build because it came in the mail from ready-made RC so to connect the addressable LED you're gonna connect the signal wire to the LED port on the dodo and then the negative and the positive to any open negative and uh, 5 volt out on the power on the uh, sorry the flight controller. Um, so once you have this done, that's pretty much it. Then we're just going to move on to the programming of the LED in clean flight. Here's just a little diagram to help visualize uh, the connections that we just made. The signal wire goes to A, 5 volt goes to any red 3, and ground goes to any blue 2. If you're using the Dragonfly 32, simply connect the signal wire to motor 6 signal port, the 5 volt power to the 5 volt on motor 6, and the ground to the ground on motor 6. Alright, now to wire up the LED. So on the rear of the LED you're going to see VDD, DI, the third port, and then ground. You can ignore the third port, so we're not going to need that one. So connect the signal wire to the DI. The 5 volt power, that's going to go to VDD, and then the ground is going to go onto the ground pad. Moving on to the FPV setup. So we're going to be using the Hawkeye 200 milliwatt, or in this instance, I'm using the Mini Quad Bros uh, 200 milliwatt, which is the same exact setup. So you can ignore the, the brand here. So we're going to run the power and ground off of the 12 volt coming off of the PDB. Go ahead and cut the wires to length, and then strip the tips and pre uh, pre tin the uh, the wires there. One of my 
favorite things about these little VTXs is, is that they have a pigtail already installed on the VTX. I always run a pigtail on my VTXs, so this is a really neat feature just to help protect the VTX from any crashes. So once you have it measured out, go ahead and solder the wires on to the positive and negative coming off the 12 volt. And then we'll move on to the next step. We're gonna be powering the FPV camera straight off of the VTX. So go ahead and take this plug with the signal, power, and ground coming off of it. You can remove the other two wires, which you know, we won't need. And then take your FPV camera with the signal, power, and ground coming off of it and measure out how much slack you're gonna need to solder the camera wires to the VTX wires. At this point, it's a good idea to throw on the FPV camera mount that comes with the frame just to see where you wanna place the camera. And I would recommend leaving some extra slack so you can adjust the camera angle and the position uh, towards the front or the back of the camera mount. Once you've measured and cut your wires, go ahead and strip off some of the wire coverings and then we're going to pre-tin the wires so that we can solder them from the camera to the VTX. Grab some heat shrink and throw that over the wires coming off the VTX and then we're going to go ahead and solder the two wires together, um, signal to signal, power to power and ground to ground from the VTX to the camera. testing out uh, components, I always use what I call a smoke stopper. It's what you see in the picture here. It's basically an interior light from a car uh, wired up uh, from the quad going into the LiPo. What it does is if there's a, a short on the frame, the light will light up uh, and it will protect any components from frying. If you guys are interested, I can definitely do a short build video on how to make one of these. Alright, so let's move on to the receiver. Uh, we're going to be using the D4R2. And if you're using the Dragonfly 32, you're going to want to connect uh, the D4R2 to row 1 on the top right. You see signal, 5 volt, and ground. If you're going to use a Seriously Dodo or Seriously Pro flight controller, simply solder the signal wire coming from the D4R2 to pin 2, the 5 volt to pin 3, and the ground to pin 6 on the left side of the flight controller. Now what I usually do with my D4Rs is I'll remove uh, the left side, the left row of pins, uh, leaving the right row of 3x2 pins. Um, so what you can do is just clip off the wires and then just take a soldering iron and some pliers and pull the uh, remaining pieces of the pins through. You can even take this a step further and remove all the pins and just solder the wires directly onto the board to save weight and space. Since we removed the pins that the jumper plug connects to, what you're going to need to do is jump the two pins closest to the telemetry port just using some solder. Um, this is pretty easy to do, just might take a little bit of time to get the solder to connect uh, from hole to hole. 
All right, so just take a servo lead and we're gonna plug that into the D4R with the signal wire on the far right, the power in the middle, and the ground on the left. And you're gonna to wanna to plug these into the top row of pins. So just remove uh, a section of the wire coverings and then we're gonna pre-tin these so we can stick them right onto the, the flight controller. To bind the D4R, if you're using the Tyrannus, go into the model setup page and click the bind button. Also make sure that you're in D8 mode, not D16. So what you're gonna need is just an Allen wrench or a small pin to hold down the black button on the D4R2. And what you're gonna need to do is hold that button down while you're plugging in the, uh, the quad. And also just make sure that your Tyrannus is in bind mode and it should be beeping. did this correctly you should see the red light blinking quickly. All you need to do now is unplug the quad, hit enter on bind, and then replug the quad in and you should see a solid green light on the D4R2. So I'm going to be flashing this flight controller with beta flight which I, I have been running on all my quads now and it just makes the tuning a lot a lot smoother, a lot easier, and uh, I've noticed a lot better control on the, on the quad. So go ahead and wire up your ESCs. You're gonna put the top right motor into port one, the bottom right into port two, the bottom left into port three, and the top left into port four. And what I like to do is just kind of twist up the the ESC wires just to make the build a little cleaner and make sure that no wires are hanging out to get caught in the props. So go ahead and plug in your D4R2 and uh, connect the power to the flight controller. Again this, this power is coming off with a 5 volt um, from the power distribution board and uh, just screw that down and then we'll move on to the next step.
All right, to flash Betaflight, you're gonna to need to download the Betaflight hex file from GitHub. Uh, if you're using the Dodo, it's gonna be the SP Racing F3. If you're using the MRM Dragonfly, it's gonna be the Naze. So open up CleanFlight, and then you're gonna load local firmware. Just click on the uh, Betaflight hex file, and uh, you're gonna do a flash firmware. So connect your flight controller to your computer and then just click, click flash and it'll take about a minute to run. Alright, so once you flash beta flight, we're going to connect and go to the configuration tab. We're going to set uh, RX to PPM and then we're going to do a uh, roll adjustment of 180 and yaw adjustment of 90. That's if you have your board in the same configuration as I do. Um, just go back into the setup tab after you save and make sure that your quad is uh, moving in the right directions as you're moving it with your hand. All right, so we're gonna check motor stop and one shot. And we're not gonna do any uh, VBAT monitoring for this build. Check the LED strip and uncheck black box, and then save those settings. For PID tuning, I'm using Lux Float. Um, and then I, I set my roll rate to 0.6, my pitch rate to 0.6, and my yaw rate to 0.4. Um, if you're new to flying, I recommend keeping your roll rate pretty low, around 0.1 or 0.2. And then I would just leave the RC rate at 1 and the Expo at you know 50 to 70. Just save that. And then we're going to do the programming of the addressable LED. So you're going to want to first clear all and then click wire ordering mode and then just select a square of 3x3 three and then get out of wire ordering mode, highlight all nine of the LEDs, select color, blue, and then arm state, and then save that. So what this is gonna do is when the quad is unarmed, it's gonna be green, and then when the quad is armed, all the LEDs are gonna turn to blue. Also, we're gonna uncheck the failsafe because I'm gonna be setting that on the D4R2. Set up the failsafe, all you need to do is power on the quad with your transmitter on and then just hold down the black button on the D4R2 for a second or two and then that's going to set your fail safe to whatever settings you have on your receiver which I would have your throttle at zero. Alright the last thing I want to show you guys is how to program ESCs using the one wire feature in clean flight. Go ahead and open up clean flight, connect your quad and we're going to go to the lower left tab, which is the CLI. In here, you're going to want to type one wire code one. This is going to connect to motor one and the heli. Once you've done that, go ahead and click disconnect and then open up the heli. And then from here, you're going to want to select the Scilabs BL Heli bootloader if you're running uh, Little D's or if you're running the Zeus 20 amp like I am. Select COM11 for the port and then click connect. Also make sure that your quad is plugged into the battery power. And just remember to remove your props anytime you're doing any of this programming, just to be safe. So it'll take a second to connect. Okay, then we're going to read the setup. This is going to show you where your ESCs currently are set to. You can see in the top, I'm running BL Heli 14.2. Um, I recommend this if you're running beta flight. Um, I've had some issues running earlier flights, earlier revisions of BL Heli. So if you need to flash your ESC, you should click on the flash BL Heli button uh, right to the right of right setup. Alright, so after you write the setup, you're going to go back into clean flight and connect your quad. 
Go into the CLI tab again, and we're going to hit type in one wire space two, and this is going to connect us to ESC number two. Hit enter and then disconnect. Okay, so if you're going to be running the 1306 motors, I would recommend setting your motor timing to medium high. As you can see uh, in the third column on the bottom, motor timing. Um, if you're running, let's say you're running 2205, which the uh, F14B can handle. Um, you want to set your motor timing to medium. So just read the setup and then make sure you write the setup after you change anything and then click OK. Alright, so we'll just repeat this process for ESCs number three and number four and then you'll be all done. Good, good, good. 